that uh, Yogi came back this year, and what does that mean for your team? Well, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised that any of them came back because they were smart, you know, in the sense of they smart in the sense that they did the research. And if they'd have looked at the research and, and, and still gone, well, then you support them. But what they did is they looked at the research. They knew that we could have a really good team. They knew that they could expand their game, their abilities, their athleticism, all those different things that can make them better players uh, when it comes down to it. But the number one thing that's going to be, that's going to differentiate them is if they win. And, and, I mean, and win big. Because if you win big, now you're putting yourself in a different realm. And that's got to be as much of a driving force as anything else. And then it's how you come back. And what I've been impressed with with all of them is the way that they've worked. Not just Yogi, but the way that they've worked. And we start our phase two. Our phase one, our spring work, was really, really good. But I know that the majority of them have been doing a very good job on their own. And then we start our, our second session. We start our eight weeks with them this coming week. So phase two has got to be fantastic. And then as you go into it, then you want guys. Yogi's a great example. I want him as concerned about being defensive player of the year on that all defensive team as anything else. Because if you do that, now you're building a, an even bigger niche and, and, and becoming one of the purest guards in the country when it comes to decision making, when becoming one of the most complete guards in the country when it comes to combining the offensive and the defensive parts. And, and, and it's the same with the other guys, whether it's James, whether it's Troy, whether it's any of the players that are returning. And the same with the young guys, build your niche based on, on how you compete, uh, how you defend, how you rebound, how you make the game easier for your teammates, the plays that you not only make for yourself, but that you make for others, and, and put that all together as a group, and let's see how far we can take it. Is there anything new with the assistant search or with the strength? Yeah, I'm close on that. Strength and conditioning, uh, we'll have an announcement very soon on that. And the same thing with, with um, it, it, everything's kind of got slowed down you know the spring was really important that we stayed with the spring that we didn't have any days that we had a transition and then as soon as the season or as soon as the school year ended then we had the issue with Hunter and Devin and so we went right back into a you know a, a major recruiting mode and it wasn't like let's just get ready for the 2016s and 2017s we've got to recruit right now so we've really kept uh, we haven't had a chance to not have a time period where we haven't been uh, full tilt, so to speak. So uh, I'll have some announcements on that forthcoming and, and um, shortly. Do you Tom, anticipate I know you, filling the, I'm sorry. Do you anticipate filling the, the final scholarship spot that you have? If there's a player that fits it. If there's a player that fits us from a competitive standpoint, there's a player that fits us from a, uh, and, and not as much need, but just coming in that's going to bring something uh, to the team, you know, and, and, and um, not in a short term, but somebody that can be good now, but somebody that could also develop into being a, a, an even better player as we move down the line. You know, we've toyed with the idea of taking a, a transfer that would sit out, but I didn't see any that really made a lot of sense for us in that, in, in that uh, particular vein, and, and especially when we lost the two that we knew we needed to make our team better, like right now. And it wasn't like we were gonna be able to sit there. You know, I, I, I didn't feel as good about where we were at um, Depth-wise, um, defense and rebounding-wise, um, as, it, as it was, and, and, and toughness-wise. And so then all of a sudden we had a change you know, with two guys that we were really anticipating, especially after Devin got healthy or healthier, uh, we were anticipating a lot with those guys. And, and um, so it kind of changed things. But it, 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 what it has to be now is something that would really make sense. There's no rush. Uh, our eyes are open on it, and, and we have nothing in the works, so to speak, like there's not anybody scheduled to come in right now or anybody that we're pursuing in a, in a, in a way that it would be in the near future. But, I mean, something that could change tonight, right? I mean, that's, recruiting is so fluid. I mean, it's so fluid, and, and it's getting, it's, it's never ending, you know, and that's one of the reasons that, I mean, look at it again. You know, we're, we're, we're over-signed at the beginning, and three days after the school semester ends, we're under by two. You know, it's a very, very fluid, ever-changing process. And you have to be prepared. And in this situation with, with, with a scholarship available, uh, we'll do our best to, to, to find something that really makes sense. And if not, we won't. Is we'll, it we'll nice to have one in your hand this late, like you did with Emmett last year? Um, 
I, again, is it nice? We didn't anticipate it, but then things change and then you have to, you have to be able to move. Like right now, you can't take two or three days, let alone a week, to, to process it. I mean, you've got to be ready to go right now. I mean, that's how, that's how quick uh, the game is changing. And, and, and especially with the, uh, the, the number of people that, that leave schools or the number of fifth-year candidates and, and things change. Coaching changes, all those different things change. So, I mean, it's such a it's, – it's, it's easy to look at it as a volatile business. Well, it's only volatile if you're not prepared for it. So you've got to do everything you can do to be uh, in constant preparation for it. So is it nice? Uh, it's not perfect. But, you, but at the same time, it is what it is. So if we can make the team better, if we can make the program better, we'll do it. Tom, I know you can't specifically talk about any fifth-year mm -hmm. transfer, but in general, are you pleased with the direction of the front court is now in af after losing the two guys? Uh, I think so in the sense of, of, of moving forward. And, and again, we, we just we want to play – we want to build on a lot of the good things that we did. I mean, like we took our three-point shooting from being somewhere in the 160s, you know, to, to, a, to a much higher level. We've led the Big Ten in scoring, I think, when you take the four years combined. I mean, there's so many things that we got better at last year. But for us to make the jump that we got to make and want to make, we've got to get better at a lot of things. And, again, it's not like you just come back and pick up from where you left off. I mean, and you, you're, you're constantly trying to – to build your team and, and teach your team around your best players around your oldest players but at this, because, because you want the young guys to understand what's at stake, but at the same time you've got to be able to help train them. They, you, can't, you can't teach at a level that they can't understand or that they're not ready to take. And that's where your leadership comes in because you want to make your team better constantly. Well, well the veterans have got to make it better. So for us to do that, if we get really good veteran leadership, and there's no reason to believe based on what we've done in the past year, I'm really excited about what kind of jumps from one year to two year guys like Robert, James, Emmett, Tim, those guys can make. You know, hopefully those, there's going to be some really good jumps there. And based on the spring, I would anticipate that happening. But for us to play the way that we want to play, to, to pick the ball up more, uh, like we've talked about in the past, to pick it up with more pressure, to try to, bring, to br try to bring even more speed to the game, not just because the shot clock has changed, but to bring more speed to it, create more possessions. You know, how do we do that? You do it on defense, you do it on offense. You've got to have enough people to do that. Well, to have enough people, it's got to be enough really strong depth. And to have really strong depth, you've got to have really strong competition. And if you get really good competition, then you build that depth. If there's not uh, too deep competition at, at all those different <clears throat> spots, well, then you don't really find out how good you can be. So it's kind of a, I don't know if we're where we need to be yet. We'll figure that out. We got to the, we got to July last year, and I realized we weren't ready to go. And this is when Devin was healthy at this point, and Hunter was healthy at this point, and I didn't, I did, I was not comfortable with our roster. And fortunately. Had a staff that was, especially in Chuck's case, that was able to to uncover Emmett, and Emmett got a lot better and helped us a lot. So, again, I keep going back to that word fluid. If you're not if you're not locked in every day uh, to to managing your team in the sense of what your roster looks like and what your depth looks like and what your future looks like, uh, your competition is. So you better make sure that you're doing it as well. To, the, to that end, I guess it seems like the last couple of years we've talked a lot about the youth of. of mm -hmm. Two years ago, last year, it seems like I mean a lot of guys coming back is you know as many as four starters. Suddenly, I think I mean again I know you can't talk about certain guys, but three seniors, some juniors. Do you feel like this team has maybe the experience factor that the last couple maybe didn't? Well, I don't. Yes and no. Um, we we need to be a much more physical. Uh, we need to be tougher to play against, especially on the defensive end. We need to be even faster on the offensive end. Um, it's hard for guys to understand this, and experience and understanding of the game helps, but it doesn't, it doesn't put it over the top. We have to have players that are as good without the ball, okay, and as active without the ball as they are with the ball. Because when that ball moves for us, uh, we're in a pretty good place. We've got numerous guys that can make plays, and the whole thing became with this team, all right, to make sure that we had enough versatile players to play multiple ways, offensively and defensively. And, and, and bring pressure to the game and, and get a team that, okay, sometimes it's three guards, sometimes it's two guards, and Troy is in that position, or maybe Colin is able to move to that position. 
you, it, it, you, you can do a lot of different things. Well, to be able to do that, you've got to have players that understand how to make each other better. The hardest thing for guys to understand is how committed they have to be to making their teammates better. And not just getting along with their teammates, not just working with their teammates, not just enjoying their teammates, but truly making them better. That's the experience question for me, because inside of that, all right, where we had, where we had issues a year ago, okay, we're really on that defensive end of taking care of each other defensively, having, having guys that are defensive stop mentality. Like, I'm really interested in a group of guys that are more interested, like we said with Yogi, making that all-defensive team, being one of the best defenders in this league and in the country, than where they sit on the scoring fence or where they sit in the all-league balloting. You know, that, that stuff really is irrelevant. <clears throat> what are you getting better at? And if your experience says that I know I've got to be better at this, and I say that because phase two of the spring was really good. We did, a, we did a very good job academically. Here's Yogi Ferrell, an answer to who asked that question. He leave, here's Yogi Ferrell. He took 20 credit hours, okay? I mean, 20 credit hours. The spring that he had, had an outstanding spring. All right, going over the, the thought process of, of leaving, doing all the research, he never missed, uh, never missed a beat. I was talking to Tim Corbin about a couple of his guys that are, that are, that are potentially high draft picks, okay? And Dansby Swanson and, uh, and, and uh, Carson Fulmer. Those guys are Dean's List students in the end of their junior year. When you've got guys that have that kind of mentality, okay, that, that, are, that, are, that, are, that are putting it all together, now you've got a chance to really be a good team. Now that remains to be seen. We've got to make sure we have a great summer and build on those same things. And then the experience has a chance to, to, to matter. I know the rules changes that still have to be approved finally, but just thoughts on the, the potential change to a 30 second shot clock and how that might change anything as far as how you play. Well, it's gonna, it's gonna what, what, what we learned, I, I've said this before, but what we learned from being in Montreal with the 24 seconds is that everybody over there is already playing 24 seconds, right? So like it was new for us and we're like, okay, we've got to run our offense in 24 seconds. Those teams over there, they weren't concerned about the 24 seconds. They were more concerned about getting another possession. That's why their guards were such good rebounders from behind the three point line. That's why there was steals and defensive pressure and different traps that would come at different times. That's what I think it becomes. Who's going to figure out a way to not just play within that 30 second clock, who's going to do the better job constantly game in and game out of creating more possessions, which is going to create more easy baskets, which is going to create more fouls, uh, allows you to play more guys. I mean, we, we want to have a deep team. When, when you go to the bench and there's not a huge difference between 8, 9, and 10 versus 3, 4, and 5, okay, in that lineup, now you really got a chance to be good. Now, it doesn't mean that those guys are as good as scores or as experienced, but they play hard, they compete, they create extra possessions, they get 50-50 balls. You know, a, a great rule right now, the 10-second, okay, backcourt. If there's a timeout call, that, that you don't get a new 10 seconds. You know, I think that's great. So you've got a pressure. But at the same time, your press offense is going to have to be really good. Your secondary break is going to have to be very good. How you attack changing defenses. I mean, it's very likely you're going to see teams, some of the people I've talked to, they're definitely looking at pressing more back into a zone, okay, because – what they're going to try to try to do is create confusion, slow that clock down, make you have to make plays inside of the shot clock. Well, now, where you get into your shot clock offense at 10, 11, 12 seconds, now you better be really good seven seconds and under, eight seconds and under. So that's where the changes are going to be. It's not about let's just get ready for these rules. Let's see how, how far into it we can get all right, at an even higher level with creating those possessions, with, with having an understanding of how well that ball has to move, with not wasting time, and, and with playing the game with more of a pace constantly, especially on the defensive end. Anything else for Coach? Yeah, Tom, I have one quick question. I asked Fred this. Are you confident now that the guys you have are mature enough to do what needs to be done? What kind of question is that? Well, in other words, I don't understand. In, in, in other words, no more glitches, no more. Oh. They're, 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 they understand the way you want the program. To you be guaranteed done. that in your family? You guaranteed that you guarantee there'll be no mistake in your house? No. None, no, no, right? Like right. no mistake. Me neither. I'm not guaranteed in my house either. No, and I'm not talking about. But that's guaranteed. what you're asking. No, no, I'm asking. Are you confident that, that these guys finally get it? it, it that, that's that's. Uh, I'd love to tell you yes. Okay, but we're dealing with young people. Right. All right. And the, and the thing that's so easy to do is when you have a mistake with a person, okay, it's very easy to say, oh, get rid of them. You know, get rid of them. They don't get it. They don't care. They don't care. 
You know, that's supposed to be toughness, right? Toughness is trying to help them get through it, to me. Because, because I don't know if you'd want your child, and I don't think I'd want my child, playing for somebody that would be ready to do away with them the first time there's a mistake. What you're trying to do is constantly trying to get them to learn, to reaffirm the difference between right and wrong, to understand they're a part of something so much bigger than themselves, okay? And, and I don't think there's any coach, I don't think there's any leader, I don't think there's any parent in the country I right, could step in front of that question and give you an unequivocal yes, okay? Would everybody be hopeful? Do you hope that everything goes well in your family? I sure hope it goes well in mine. But that doesn't mean that what you can do is you've got to take every possible step that you can take. Understand that you're living in the real world, okay, with real people that have families, and you're trying to do everything you can do to prepare them for their future. And sometimes it's longer for those people to get it. And unfortunately, you have to look at a point in time where sometimes you can't go on together. And that's very hard. You don't get into the business of coaching and leadership or any type of business, and I certainly don't think anybody becomes a parent to make a decision in a, in a flippant, quick way to say, okay, well, we got to get rid of them, we got to move them. They're not good enough for us. That's not what you do. And, and so uh, I understand your question to a degree, but at the same time, I don't know how I could even possibly answer that, and other than giving you some long answer that no, you answer really that's too. the way that it is. Okay. So, but again, I mean, anybody, it, it's, it's, it's so easy to talk about the way that it should be, and then that's a whole different story when you're dealing, and, you, and you've had teenagers, right? Yes. Yeah, me too, yeah. okay? It's a different deal, and, and um, you've got to be on top of every possible thing that you can be on top of, and at the same time, you never know if that's going to be enough. But all you keep doing is loving them, trying to help make them better. Uh, sometimes... Um, patterns or, or, or things like that come into it of decision making that you sometimes you have to make a choice that you really didn't want to make but you make it and that becomes part of it too but but I didn't get in the business of, of education and I'm not a teacher obviously I'm a coach I don't even begin to uh, act like I could go and teach a class you know time and time again those people are worth beyond their weight in gold but you don't get into this to, to not try to help them grow up and be successful and I've coached a lot of years, and if you got rid of uh, people after a couple of mistakes every time, I, I'd, have a, I'd have a few guys that um, they may not be who they are, right? They may not be known the way they're known. And at the same time, you want everybody to have a chance uh, to have as, as, as good a life and as good a future as they can possibly have. But understand that they're a part of a team, and there's, there's a lot of things that go into that. Okay. With uh, with Devin, <clears throat> he was obviously cited by the police, but I don't think Connor was actually in legal situation in trouble with that situation. Uh, was it just an accumulation of things in his case? Yeah, we're, we, that that was a decision that was made uh, over a period of time, and and um, it's just um, it was unfortunate. It was unfortunate that we that we made it, but that was the decision that was made, and we've had to move forward. And I'm glad that he's moving forward, and I hope they both move forward and have tremendous futures and careers because you're not going to stop caring about them and, and uh, loving them and they're going to always appreciate what they did and and want them to be successful people. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thanks.